Welcome to another installment of Super Suits, the internet comic book show where we run down some of the most famous lawsuits in the long and storied history of superheroes and comic books. And on today's installment, oh boy, do we have a humdinger of a case for you. Stan Lee is easily one of the most recognizable faces in the world of comics, if not popular culture as a whole. His resume speaks for itself. Spider-Man, X-Men, Fantastic Four, Iron Man, Hulk, and many more. And while he hasn't actively been writing comics for the last few decades, he has worked tirelessly being one of the best ambassadors for comics and nerd culture all over the world. Basically, he is to the world of superheroes what Walt Disney was to the world of animation, or Jim Henson was to the world of puppeteering. Stan has also managed to keep busy over the years with a number of other business ventures, and it's one of those ventures that leads us into our suit for today. You see, in 1998, he helped found Stan Lee Media, a startup company to help manage a series of new intellectual properties, mostly for the internet. These projects included the animated 7th Portal, Lee's first wholly original superhero team of characters in many years, a new series from Howard the Duck creator Steve Gerber, and even something featuring the boy band The Backstreet Boys as cyber-themed superheroes. You cannot make this stuff up. The corporate launch of Stan Lee Media, later renamed Stan Lee Media Inc., was a huge affair. 7th Portal was unveiled at a million-dollar gala hosted by none other than Mr. New Year's Eve himself, Dick Clark. But by 2000, the party was over. The company ran ran out of money in the dot-com meltdown and was hit with a series of legal investigations over funding issues. Stan the Man Lee transferred the rights to his original characters to his new venture, POW Media. And what happened next is where things get really messy. You see, the company descended into a series of complicated lawsuits over the various Marvel Studio movies and even the legendarily bad Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark musical, claiming that Lee's deal with them made them owners of his Marvel creations. So what we're essentially going to be dealing with from here is a company that's hemorrhaging money and bearing the name of Stan Lee, but is actually in no way connected to Stan Lee. In January 2007, Lee sued Stan Lee Media Inc. and Jim Nesfield, who was running the company at the time, claiming they were committing $50 million worth of trademark infringement. On March 15th, 2007, Nesfield, representing the shareholders of Stan Lee Media Inc., filed a lawsuit in New York against Marvel Entertainment for $5 billion dollars, claiming that Stan Lee's assignment of all of his creating rights to Stan Lee Media made Stan Lee Media Inc. co-owners of the characters that Lee created for Marvel. And this was all just the beginning. What would follow from here would be years worth of jaw-dropping, headache-inducing legal shenanigans. So I'll do my very best to give you the abridged version because we're not even at the best parts yet. Okay, so Stan Lee Media again in 2007 tried to sue Stan Lee saying that he moved assets including characters that they own to his new company illegally, but by 2008 this case was dismissed only to be replaced with a bigger, similar suit this time filed in New York. In 2009, attorney for Stan Lee Media Inc., Martin Garbus decided instead of just suing Stan Lee, this time they were going to sue all of Marvel Enterprises, which means big power players like Avi Arad and Isaac Perlmutter were starting to get involved. They were looking for over $700 million in profits supposedly owed to them by Marvel to Stanley Media since 1998. This case would continue to rage on in one form or another, even after Garbus, fed up with his own clients, decided to pack it in, only to be quickly replaced by someone else. On March 31st, 2010, Judge Paul Crotty dismissed the New York lawsuit against Marvel, Stanley, and the others, citing lack of standing, expiration of statute of limitations, and other such causes. And in any normal world, this would be the end of things, but apparently we don't live in a normal world. Apparently, we live on pants on head crazy world because, you see, in a twist worthy of the very comic books that they're fighting over, a stranger would come into play. In 2011, a mysterious investor named Michael Wolk organized a group to finance Stan Lee Media Inc.'s legal actions against Walt Disney. On October 10th, 2012, Stan Lee Media Inc. sued the Walt Disney Company, the current owner of Marvel in Colorado, for billions of dollars over the rights to the Marvel characters claiming that Stanley assigned the rights for his characters to Marvel and that Disney never publicly recorded Marvel's agreement with Lee with the U.S. Copyright Office. In motions to dismiss the lawsuit, Disney called the suit, quote, frivolous and wholly improper attempts to revive a claim already rejected a staggering three times already. But like Wolverine, this case would just refuse to die. In March 2015, the U.S. Supreme Court declined to hear Stanley Media Inc.'s appeal of the Ninth Circuit 
decision. In July 2015, Stanley Media Inc. was ordered to pay Disney nearly 82 thousand in legal fees in respect to its failed Tenth Circuit claim. And what of this Mr. Wolk, the largely unknown figure who's supposed to own Stan Lee Media Inc.? He fell off the face of the earth. According to his people, he was finger quotes sick, but it gets so much better. The company's funds, well, it seems that they've been drained, mostly to pay Wolk's own legal fees. As of writing this right now in 2016, he's still in the win and is still sought by Disney's lawyers. And I mean, I mean, really, how annoying must this be for Stan Lee? Imagine yourself in his shoes for a second. A company that bears your name that you no longer have any control over or interaction with continues to sue you and the people you work with for your own creations. Well, everyone, that will just about do it for me in another installment of Super Suits. As always, for more educational comic book videos, be sure to subscribe to Scott and NerdSync. And if you want to see what I'm about, you can always check out my newest video over on Cape Joel. And before I go, make the general easy Mo proud and hit that big red sexy subscribe button, why don't you? Excelsior!